The reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 49. Gather together and hear, you sons of Jacob, and listen to Israel, your father. Judah, you are he whom your brothers shall praise. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's children shall bow down before you. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He bows down, he lies down as a lion. And as a lion, who shall rouse him? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh comes, and to him shall be the obedience of the people. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the responsorial psalm taken from Psalm 71. Let our response be, God, the rock of salvation. Together, God, the rock of salvation. Deliver me in your righteousness and cause me to escape. Incline your ear to me and save me. Response. Be my strong refuge to which I may resort continually. You have given the commandment to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, O oh my God, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. Response. O oh God, you have taught me from my youth, and to this day I declare your wondrous works. Response. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew, chapter 1. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac, and Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Judah and his brothers. Judah begot Perez and Zerah by Tamar. Perez begot Hezron, and Hezron begot Ram. Ram begot Aminadab, Aminadab begot Nashon, and Nashon begot Salmon. Salmon begot Boaz by Rahab. Boaz begot Obed by Ruth. Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David the king. David the king begot Solomon by her who had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon begot Rehoboam, Rehoboam begot Abijah, and Abijah begot Asa. Asa begot Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat begot Joram, and Joram begot Uzziah. Uzziah begot Jotham, Jotham begot Ahaz, and Ahaz begot Hezekiah. Hezekiah begot Manasseh, and Manasseh begot Ammon, and Ammon begot Josiah. Josiah begot Jeconiah and his brothers about the time they were carried away to Babylon. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconiah begot Sheltiel, and Sheltiel begot Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel begot Abihad. 
and Abiud begot Eliakim, and Eliakim begot Azor. Azor begot Zadok, Zadok begot Akim, and Akim begot Elihud. Elihud begot Eleazar, Eleazar begot Mason, and Mason begot Jacob. And Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. From David until the captivity in Babylon are 14 generations. And from the captivity in Babylon until the Christ are 14 generations. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I have asked so many people kung ano mga favorite scripture verse nila. Wala pa akong narinig na tao na nagsasabi, favorite ko yung Matthew 1, chapter 1, verse 1 to 17. Most of the time, ito yung part ng Bible na hindi natin binabasa. Kasi maraming bigat. Okay? Mabigat basahin. Okay? It talks about the family tree of Jesus. You know, from Abraham, mentioned dun ilang generations yan until the Christ was there. So most Christians I know don't read this part. Ako rin hindi ko binabasa to. Okay? Mabigat. Maraming bigat. Okay? But, ang kagandahan sa liturgy kasi pagdating sa Advent, wala kang choice. Sa ayaw at gusto mo, you need to read. This is the assigned reading. So through the years, pag nagkakaroon tayo ng Advent season, I get to read this. And habang binabasa, binabasa, you know, minsan, alam ko na to. Eh. Practice lang to ng pronunciation ng mga pangalan. Okay? Pinapractice mo lang yung pronunciation. But I, through the years, as I begin to read this, I begin to appreciate this scripture. I'm not saying that this is now my favorite verse, verses of scripture, but I begin to appreciate this. There are significant things that I would like us to understand. There may be more, but three significant things about the gospel today na kailangan natin maintindihan. When I say significant, it's worth noticing it. Why? Because it is relevant in our life. Okay? Number one, the family tree of Jesus. Sinulat talaga, galing kay Abraham. No? What does it say? It says to us that family is important. Amen? Tanungin ko kayo ngayon, kilala nyo ba yung pangalan ng lolo nyo? How many of you can still do know the name of your lolo? Oh, marami. Talaga maganda, no? Okay, tanungin ko kayo. Yung tatay ng lolo nyo, kilala nyo ba? O konti na lang. Sino sa inyo kilala nyo yung tatay ng lolo mo? Bali yung great-grandfather mo. O konti na lang. Eto, yung lolo ng lolo mo, kilala nyo pa? Ha? Medyo malabo na, no? Hanggang doon na lang. Okay? Well, Jesus Christ, si Jesus Christ, the trace talaga ni Matthew, yung lineage niya. Okay? And what is it saying to us today? That God did not just bring Jesus to earth, na parang ganyan na lang. Okay? It says to us that God integrately, okay, patiently purposed and planned Jesus to come to the world. And He came through a family. Kagaya sa atin din. Kaya importante ang pamilya. Pag nakita niyo yung family tree ni Jesus, it simply reminds us that every family on earth is also important to God. No, etong sasabihin ko sa iyo, baka hindi ka maniwala. Alam mo ba yung pamilya mo importante sa Diyos? 
Okay, can you tell the person beside you, your family is very important to God? Yeah, we have to understand that kaya palaging sinasabi sa scriptures, children, obey your parents. Parents, do not provoke your children to anger. Why? Because family is very important. The second thing we need to realize, pangalawa, we will see that God is always faithful to fulfill His promise. Amen? God will always be faithful to fulfill His promise. Take note. Sabi ni Lord kay Abraham, I am going to bless you and you will be a blessing. Yan ang lesson natin every Wednesday. Genesis, saan nakukuha yan? Blessed to be a blessing, saan nakukuha? Okay, Genesis chapter 12. Okay, sa tandaan natin palagi yan. When God said to Abraham, Go out from your country, go forth out of your country, I will bless you and you will be a blessing. And through you, I will bless all the families of the earth. Okay? Through Abraham, sabi niya, I will bless all the families of the earth. Now, how was this fulfilled? The promise of God that through Abraham, He will bless all the families of the earth is fulfilled in Jesus. Why? Because Jesus is the seed of Abraham. Makikita natin dito. Ang unang sinabi ka agad ni Matthew, Abraham. Okay? Abraham begat Isaac. So, nandun yung pinakatatay nila. Now, in, Luke, in Luke's Gospel, makikita mo, kay Adam pa nga eh. Trinase ni Luke. Mas matindi si Luke. Si Matthew hanggang Abraham lang. Si, si Luke, he traced the lineage of Jesus up to Adam. Okay? So, when God said that I will bless all the families through you, it was a promise to Abraham. But at the same time, that promise was fulfilled in Christ. After many generations, it was fulfilled. Why? Because God will always fulfill His promise. God also promised to David, sabi niya, your throne and your kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom. Eh, alam natin, patay na si David. Okay? And paano maging everlasting ang kingdom niya? It was fulfilled also in Jesus. The kingly position of Jesus, the kingly authority of David continued on because Jesus is a descendant of David. So na-fulfill pa rin yung promise ni Lord. So that's one thing we need to understand in our life. No matter what happens, if God promised it, God will do it. Okay? He who started a good work in you will be faithful to complete that work. Medyo may delay ng konti. Medyo, God will not be working on your time frame. But definitely, pag sinabi ni Lord, gagawin ni Lord. And the third thing, we need to understand about God. Jesus, Jesus is the promise of God worth waiting for. Okay? Jesus is the promise of God worth waiting for. Kung anumang promise ang meron ka na binigay ni Lord, kahit gaano katagal, it will always be worth waiting for. Amen? From the Old Testament, God promised the Messiah to come. Namatay na lang si Abraham. And you know, David came. Sabi niya, you know, he's going to come from your line. The people of Israel waited for that Messiah. Kinantay talaga nila dumating. After how many generations, Jesus finally came. Now, ang question ko, was it worth waiting for? Yes. Okay, why? Because He came. Kahit gaano katagal antayin mo, 
Darating at darating yan. Amen? Now, there is another promise given to us sa atin na ngayon. He will come again. Okay? The first advent was Christmas, but then again, God promised that His Son will return. And we proclaim that in our creed, He will come again. And the season of Advent, we prepare for that second coming. So is it worth the wait? Amen? Is it worth the wait? Yes, it is. No matter how long it will take, Jesus is always worth waiting for. Amen? So those are the three things we need to understand about Advent. So with those three things, what kind of attitude do we need to cultivate? This morning, we talk about repentance. If we are waiting for God, we need to cultivate an attitude of repentance. Because God is faithful to fulfill His promise, and no matter how long it would take, it is always worth waiting for because the promise will always be fulfilled. So what attitude should we have in response to God's faithfulness? We should cultivate the attitude of gratitude. Amen? We should always be a thankful people because God, no matter how difficult it is, God will always fulfill His promise in your life. So continue to cultivate a grateful attitude. Tomorrow is Sunday and we come again to church for the Lord's Day. Anong purpose natin? Bakit tayo nagsisimba? Because we are a thankful people. That's why yung worship natin, ang tawag sa worship natin is the great thanksgiving. Okay? So we worship God not because obligado tayo. We worship God hindi dahil natatakot tayo, baka saktan tayo ng Diyos. No? We worship God because He is a good God. He is loving and kind to us. So in response to His goodness, we come and we worship Him bringing our thanksgiving before Him. Amen? Nagsisimba tayo dahil grateful tayo sa kabutihan ng Diyos sa buhay natin. Shall we stand?